Welcome viewers and subscribers to another video and today's video will serve as a continuation of my foundation engineering series. Now my presentation for this video will incorporate the calculation of vertical effective stress as well as stresses in your foundation. Now before I get into the actual presentation of calculating the vertical effective stress there are some additional notes that I've come across that I think is worthwhile to bring to your attention so as to give you a comprehensive look or comprehensive understanding of what goes into foundation engineering and that is subsurface exploration now there are several reasons why the geotechnical engineer carry out the subsurface exploration prior to the structure foundation being designed and these are one selecting the type and depth of foundation suitable for the given structure evaluating the load bearing capacity of the foundation estimating the probable settlements of a of the structure Determine the potential foundation problems, example expansion of soil, collapse of the soil, sanitary landfill, etc. And determine the depth of the water table. Yes, you're going to see some calculation when I'm going about teaching you how to calculate the vertical effective stress. And you will see how I deal with the depth of your water table. Last but not least, establishing the construction method for changing subsurface condition. So that pretty much, pretty much wraps up the theoretical aspects of foundation engineering. So from here on in, I'm just going to be going over the different calculation in terms of the vertical effective stress, stresses in your foundation, how to cal calculate the ultimate bearing capacity for deep and shallow foundation. In this segment of my presentation, I am going to teach you how to calculate the vertical effective stress of soil. Now, before I get into the actual presentation, I just want to highlight to you the importance or the necessity of calculating the vertical effective stress. Now, the vertical effective stress of your soil needs to be determined in order to evaluate if the stress of the soil can carry the stress of the building or the stress of the structure. Because without the stress of the soil, adequately enough can carry the stress of the building or the stress of that structure that structure is going to have foundation problems and can lead to shear failure and that is why it is important to know the vertical effective stress at a particular depth to know if the soil at that particular depth can carry the stress of the building or the stress of the structure so the vertical effective stress is denoted by the symbol sigma v prime or you can refer to it as stress v prime now to calculate the vertical effective stress the vertical effective stress is calculated by the weight of the soil times the height of the soil minus the weight of the water times the height of the water so if you should look at this diagram here, this diagram here represents a soil, soil profile at a depth of 12 feet. So the height of our water table is 6 feet and the weight of the soil is 120 pounds per cubic feet. So let me get into the calculation. So the the weight of the soil is 120 pounds per cubic feet. So we have 120 pounds per feet cube 
times the depth of the soil, which is 12 feet. So we have 12 feet here, minus the weight of water. Now, the weight of water, as I've said to you previously, is a thousand kilograms per meter cube or 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. And since we are working in feet, I'm going to use 62.4 pounds per cubic feet for the weight of our water. So it is going to be 62.4 pounds per feet cube times the height of water. And the height of the water table here is six feet. Six feet here. So we have 12 times 120. This is going to give us 1,440 pounds per feet square. And if you notice, we move from pounds per cubic feet to pounds per feet square. Let me show you how I arrived at that. So we have pounds divided by feet cube times feet. So if we should divide this feet into this feet cube, we're going to end up with feet square. And that is how I get it to be pounds per feet square. And pounds per feet square or Newton per meter square is how we measure pressure or how we measure stress. So the stress is going to equal to 1,440 pounds per feet square times 6 times 62.4, which is going to give us 374.4 pounds per feet square. And if we should subtract 374.4 pounds per feet square, from 1,440 pounds per feet square, the answer is going to give us 1,065.6 pounds per feet square. So the vertical effective stress of this soil layer, the maximum vertical effective stress is going to be 1,065.6 pounds per feet square at a depth of 12 feet. So that is the calculation for the vertical effective stress. I am going to give you another demonstration of how to calculate the vertical effective stress. And in this, this example, it is slightly different from the previous example with the exception that the water table in this example is at the ground level. So let me show you how to calculate the vertical effective stress at this level. So our stress V prime is going to equal to the weight of soil times the height minus the weight of water times the height. Now our sigma V prime or stress V prime, right? So if we should observe this example, the unit weight of this soil is 135 pounds per cubic feet, and it has a maximum depth of 10 feet with the groundwater table, which is at ground level. So I'm going to show you now how to calculate the vertical effective stress. So the vertical effective stress is the weight of soil, gamma soil, which is 135 pounds per feet cube times the height, which is 10 feet, minus the weight of water, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. times the height which is 10 feet because the ground water level is at the surface of the land so 10 feet so our sigma v prime is going to equal to 135 times 10 which is going to equal to 1350 pounds 
per feet square. Notice again, we move from pounds per cubic feet to pounds per feet square because pounds, pounds per feet square is how we measure stretch and I'll show you how I've, got, how I've gotten pounds per feet square. Minus 62.4 times 10, which is 624 pounds per feet square and our sigma v prime stress v prime is going to be 1350 minus 624 so that is going to give us 726 pounds per feet square for our vertical effective stress so our vertical effective stress at this level is going to be 726 pounds per feet square and what i want to bring to your attention to if you're calculating the vertical effective stress and let's say for argument's sake that the ground water table is below the depth of your foundation so your ground water table is somewhere down here then you do not need to incorporate the measurement for your ground water table because if your foundation is going to be here it's going to place here and the ground water table is below the foundation so the ground water table the ground water table is somewhere down here then your your stress v prime is going to only equal to the heights of the the depth of your soil minus my um, times the the weight of your soil so your stress v prime is only going to equal to gamma soil times height because there's no grown water table your grown water table is below your foundation level another thing i want to point out to you that is quite worthy to be known is that even though the vertical effective stress at that level at, 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 the, at the depth of your foundation is 726 pounds per feet square the engineer is not going to allow a building that carry that stress the engineer or the geotechnical engineer will have to establish a factor of safety of three so the maximum stress that the engineer will allow this 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 soil to carry would have to be 726 divided by three because he has to or she has to establish a factor of safety of three so the maximum building load building load is going to equal to seven 26 pounds per feet square divided by 3 and that is going to equal to 242 pounds per feet cube per feet square sorry per feet square so at this depth of 10 feet the maximum load that the engineer will allow that this soil to carry establishing a factor of safety of three is 200 is 242 pounds per feet square and i hope you get that understanding that if whatever you calculate your vertical effective stress to be you will have to divide that value by three to establish a safety factor of three because we do not want to overburden the soil or overstress the soil that can result in shear failure so that is it for this video i hope you understand now how to calculate the vertical effective stress and the importance of calculating the vertical effective stress as it relates to foundation engineering if you have any question regarding this topic just shoot me a comment in terms of a question and i will be happy 
to answer your question. So for those of you who are watching my channel for the first time, I'm imploring you to subscribe. When you subscribe, you give me more encouragement to do more videos like this. And for my regular viewers and subscribers, you know what to do already. And I will catch you in another video upload. Take care of yourself. Thank you.